Hello and welcome back to another Swiftly tutorial. Last time we discussed um, making a reusable keyboard that uh, has one, one class of implementation and one file for the nib which can then be reused throughout our application without any more existing code. Um, we're going to continue on with that for today. Uh, specifically we're going to focus on making our keyboard uh, more more like a keyboard. <laughs> if we look at our keyboard, the main problem we have is that our buttons are kind of rubbish. So I hear you asking, how do you create buttons that are more fancy? Well, you could you could cheat. So if we go, if we go to our keyboard view, you you could cheat and um, well, it's not really cheating, but and there's nicer ways. But you you could add an image here, for example. Of course, you start running into problems where it's not very customizable. Um, also, you're kind of limited by the uh, animation that iOS just gives you by default, whereas when you press the button, it just goes a slightly darker shade of black. So, let's look at a proper implementation here. And for that, we're going to need a new class. And in this case, it's going to be another reusable class. So we can apply this class to all our buttons uh, anywhere within our application if we want to do so. So let's create um, a new folder. And we'll call this button aesthetic. Like so here we're going to create a new file. Source, make sure we've got Cocoa Touch class. And now, instead of UI view, we're going to be using UI button, a UI button like so. Give our class a name. We'll call this circle button. And we'll add this to our project. And again, for this, we're not going to be using this, so we might as well get rid of it so we don't affect our performance. So in this we're going to attempt to create a circular button obviously. <laughs> so first things first what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to implement our decoder like we did last time and again this is responsible and is required Swift will throw an error if you don't implement this so we'll just put it in there like so I'm going to enter down and then we're going to initialize or add our initializer so it's going to be an override statement I'm going to init and I'm going to initialize the frame like so so it's also suggesting it so we'll put it here like so we're going to put in our super in it as usual frame. We're going to pass in our frame, which is this. Just add that there, like so. And then we're also going to implement our wake from nib. And of course, this essentially gets called when our application uh, loads up on our nib file. So we've got our decoder, we've got our initializer, which in will be responsible for initializing all the properties of what our button's going to look like when, it f when the class first runs. And we've got our wake from nib, which uh, runs when our application is launched on our nib file, or when our buttons are in view. So let's set up our buttons. So we'll just create a, a function for now, and we'll call it set up button style. It's just going to be a void, a void function, it's not going to return anything. We're just going to put some properties in here. So first of all, um, when we're changing um, our the button itself, our UI button, we refer to it as to its layer. So for example here, our layer is now a button. We can change, for example, its background color. So we could write, uh, we could change this background color to make sure it's a clear color. Because we're referring to its layer, we need to make sure this is a CG color, like so. You can also do things like change um, its border color. 
So we could change its border color to something else. We could change it to, let's try red this time. Um, and other things like border width. So to make it pretty, we'll put in a border width. Make it nice and thin, nice and iOS-y. iOS 70, eight, well 80 now. Uh, let's make it really thin. And uh, yeah, they've got other properties available to you. So you can set the title color, set title color. Uh, let's make this white color. You can set the the state in which it exists. You can control no, you can control state uh, dot normal. But you've got all the other things here. As this is normal highlighted. So for now, normal. Um, so so this is that. Let's make our button rounded as well. So we used to jump, uh, we'll, uh, yeah, we'll make a button rounded. So, to make a button rounded, if you are not familiar, we need to set its corner radius. And it's just simple geometry here. We need to set the corners radius layers, layers bound size width. Uh, we need to divide that by two. Um, Should be that, I think. I think that's that. I believe that's that. Yes. Our bound size dot width is divided by two. Awesome. We've got a warning here. What's I warning about? Is not. Is not. Oh, I did not put set title color. That's why. Apologize for that. Color. It's going to mode me now, isn't it? Color. Just, just like it. There you go. Okay. So here's where we set up our button properties, like so. And of course, you can do some more tinkering around. You change the colors, you can change the thickness of the border. You can also add more elements. Um, but for now, that that will be simple enough. So now, what we're going to do is implement our next method, which is called automatically. When we depress our button, and in this case, our button becomes highlighted. So it will be called. Um, uh, set highlighted like so. Then we sort of contain a boolean for whether or not our button is highlighted. So of course we're going to do some kind of if check, and then depending on the appropriate answer, depending on the answer, we'll give our appropriate response. Uh, run the appropriate method like so. I can't get my words out of my mouth. <laughs> so. That's the right method for highlighting our button. So you can just get general ID. So highlight button. So let's change our layer background color to let's change it to red. Something something that's so it's obvious. And then let's also add another method. To remove our highlightedness, if that's a word, <laughs> like so, and uh, we we'll add ding, self dot layer background. So we want to change it back to what originally was. So we'll just change it to uh, in this case it was clear, wasn't it? So you are clear color CG color, like so. So now if it's highlighted, we want to run our highlight button method. And if it's not highlighted, we want to run our clear highlighted burn method, like so. Run that. Now finally, we need to make use of these. Sorry, we need to make use of these. So when it's run, we need to set up our button style. So we'll just implement it here. So set up button style and set up button style. Awesome. So that should really be it. Um, it's pretty, pretty easy. Hopefully, hopefully it should be quite clear. Set up your stuff here. This method is run depending on the state. So when initialize it, sets up all the variables. Then, if it's highlighted, we'll change our color to red. And if it's not highlighted, then we'll change it back to clear. So now, if we go to our keyboard view. These are UI buttons, so of course they'll accept a custom UI button class. So that's, in our case, our circle button. So we implement this here, circle button. 
and if we run it, we should get one of them to be a lovely circle. Ah, so look at that, it's an eye. Ah, so what have I done wrong there? Let's have a look. Is it because that my button frame is not rounded and I'm uh, dividing it by two on the width? I think it is, yes, so that's why. So my calculation of making a circle is dependent on the, in this case, on the width of the frame. So the frame has to be symmetrical on both sides. So that's a limitation in my logic, but of course there are ways around that. For now, this should simply show you that our button is working. So now if we want to implement this on more than one button, like so, so if I get rid of these. Again, our little trick, we hold down option, we get another one, we get another one, like so, and then we get another load, and another load, like so. Lovely. We run it. We should have a lot of lovely buttons. Now look at that. It's not very clear, is it? Uh, let's go. We'll make this clear, the background of our view clear. And we'll go to our main storyboard. And the view we've implemented here will also make this clear. So our, our blue should shine through, and that white should you know, stand out against it more. Let's have a look. That's much better. So it's getting there. It's uh, it's an implementation of a custom button, and to prove that you can again reuse this button anywhere, I'll change this. I'll change this button here, and let's make this. Um, oop, I'll make this here. What's it called? A circle button. So let's have a look here. Run that, and we should have a circular button on the next page too. Lovely. Okay. Perfect. So hopefully um, that should be a brief introduction of how to use yeah, UI buttons and in this case reusable UI buttons added now to our reusable keyboard. So we're beginning to build up our keyboard, we're getting a more uh, modular status on our keyboard and uh, I think we'll leave it for there for today but um, the next time in the next part We'll pick up and make these buttons uh, provide us feedback. So we'll, we'll number these at 1 to 9, we'll type them and we'll make them get feedback to our actual view controller. So um, uh, hopefully this has been hopefully this has been useful for you. Um, uh, drop me a like and subscribe too if you, uh, if you like that. And uh, I hope you have an absolutely awesome day and I'll see you in the next video. Have any questions? Leave me a comment and I'll get back to you.